speaking for the all-star room. I'm actually here. They bring a crowd when they come. I know some of you have been up most of the night, so if you need to take a little nap, I won't hold it against you. Just don't fall out of your chair or do it too much. Got to clean that up. So, Jesus asked his disciples one day, Who do people say that I am? What are they saying out there? Some of them said, Well, some say you're Elijah. Some say you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. Some say you're Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. But then he looked at him and said, what about you? Who do you say that I am? Well, Peter spoke up. He said, you're the Christ, the Son of God. Well, Christ is a Greek word. It means anointed one. And it's the Greek way of saying Messiah. Messiah is the one who is to come and save the nation of Israel, restore the kingdom, kingdom of David. Messiah is a big word. Christ is a big word. When Paul wrote his epistles, he said, I preach Christ. I preach the Messiah and him crucified. A lot of people don't want to talk about the cross. They don't want to talk about the blood. But you know, sin is a bloody business. Sin hurts people. Sin is stupid. And no matter what little sin or big sin it is, it hurts somebody. And it costs them a big price. And Jesus bled and died on the cross to pay for the sin of all of us. If I was the only one, he would have bled and died for me. You know, our little t-shirts we have, we had beneath them say, ride for the brand. We're branded. When we become a follower of Jesus, it says we're sealed with the Holy Spirit. You ever been to a notary public? They take that little document you've got and they take out their thing and they, they squish holes right through that paper. There's holes all the way through that paper. You can't get around that. That paper will never be the same. It's marked. It's brand new. And that's the way we are. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And you know the other thing is that we bear the marks of Jesus. Paul said, don't mess with me. I bear the marks of Jesus. He was knocked down on the road to Damascus, blinded. God healed him through Ananias. But he said, I bear the marks of Jesus. Don't talk to me about that I'm not an apostle. I got the scars to prove it. But we bear the marks of Jesus. But he bears our marks too. He's branded with us. You know, I wasn't physically there to nail his hands to the cross, but I might as well have been. Those marks in his hands, I put there. That nail in his feet, yeah. That was because of my sin. That crown of thorns stuck down on his forehead, the blood dripping down in his eyes. I did that. My sin. Sin's really ugly. And maybe, maybe y'all aren't sinners, maybe just me. But that's okay. Because Jesus paid for my sin. And in Jesus, the Bible says that I'm a brand new creature. It says that I am the righteousness of God in Christ because he took my sins away. Who do you say that he is? What about you? 
Who do you say he is? You see, it's the most personal question in the whole universe. And the day when you stand up there before the judge, your mom and daddy won't be there with you. You won't have anybody with you. What do you say about my son Jesus? Did you believe him? Did you take him at his word? Because if you did, then your name is written down in that book. And they bring you right on into heaven. But if the answer is no, you have to go with the unbelievers. And that's not good. Another important question is who does he say he is? He asked what the people said, but what does Jesus say about himself? Well, while you're thinking that over a minute, let's talk about another story. In Jerusalem, there's a pool named Bethesda. There were columns around it, and it was believed that an angel would come down every now and then and stir up the water in that pool. And if you were sick and you could get in that water while it was stirred up, you'd be healed. The Bible doesn't say whether that actually happened or not, but that's what they believed. And so around the pool, it was crowded with people who were lame and paralyzed and blind and had hearing problems or one thing or another. And Jesus came along there, and he saw a man lying there who had been paralyzed for 38 years. And he said to him, do you want to get well? Now at first glance, you think, well, what a silly question. But you know, in my business, a lot of people don't want to get well. Getting well changes things. You have different responsibilities. Some people don't want to get well. It was a real important question. Then the man answered, well, when the water gets stirred, I have nobody to help me. Get down into the pool, someone else comes along and gets in there first. We kind of tend to make room for our sicknesses. And you might call them excuses. I don't know, maybe that's too strong. But Jesus said to him, Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. And immediately the man was cured. And immediately he got up and walked. Well, the day was a Sabbath. And so the Jewish leaders heard of it. And, and said he couldn't be a man of God. He wouldn't break our form of the Sabbath. You see, God said don't work on the Sabbath. But these Pharisees and scholars had interpreted it to have several hundred rules on how to keep the Sabbath. And they didn't think you ought to pick up your mat on the Sabbath. Doesn't sound like much work to me. But they were after Jesus. And so in response to that, let's go to John 5. See what Jesus said back to him. He said, I tell you the truth, the Son of Man can do nothing by himself. He can only do, this verse 19, can only do what he sees his Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. She might have a word for us. That letter come up. Verse 20, for the Father loves the Son and shows him all he does. Verse 21, for just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son gives life to whom he is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son 
does not honor the Father who sent him. Verse 24, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. Not going to have it. Not someday high in the sky. Has it. You see, when Jesus comes into your heart, you have eternal life. It's in there. You're born again. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Has eternal life and will not be condemned. Paul says there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And Jesus goes on, and he has crossed over from death to life. Has already crossed over. Turn it up, brother. <laughs> well, all man. He has crossed over from death to life. It's already happened. We think it's all, we sing songs, and some of those songs are, I love the melody and the words and everything. Some of them are wrong. It's not by and by, it's now. If you believe in Jesus, that new life is in you now. Let's go over to John 14 just for a second, a couple other verses. He's telling disciples he's going to go away and prepare a place for them. He's going to come get them. That they can be where he is. And then he says, you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas speaks up and he says, we don't even know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. The truth. And the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You say, well, that's pretty exclusive. You're right. It is very exclusive. There is one way to God. One way to eternal life. There are a lot of people out there in the world that tell you, oh, any old way is good. They're lying. There is only one way. At least that's what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That would be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. What does Jesus say about himself? He says he's the Son of God. He's been given authority and judgment. Hebrews 1.11 says he is the exact representation of the Father. You know, if somebody claims to be God, they either need to be God, or they're a liar, or a lunatic. And you have to decide. Who do you say he is? It's the most important decision you'll ever make. He claimed to be one with the Father and then proved it by the miracles and by willingly going to the cross. That was the plan from the beginning. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Willingly went to the cross. Let them nail him to the cross. Says he could have called down ten legions of angels. That's a bunch. To set him free. He willingly paid for my sin and yours. And God raised him from the dead to declare that all had been accomplished, justice had been satisfied, that our sins were forgiven, our diseases were healed. 
He wasn't re resurrected just back to life. Not this life. He was the first one born from the dead. He was born again. He had a new life, a new body, indestructible, imperishable, immortal. You know, when he showed up to see the disciples after his resurrection, he didn't come through the door. The doors were locked. He appeared to them. He said, touch me. Put your fingers in the holes in my hand. Thrust your hand into my side. Give me something to eat. Stop doubting and believe. Yeah. He said, look, I'm flesh and bone. That's not what we would say. We'd say flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. We don't say flesh and bone. His blood was poured out. All of it. For me. For you. We're going to have a body just like him. When the Lord comes, the shout of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, we're going to meet him in the air. And our bodies are going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. The mortal will put on immortal. The perishable will imperish. And we'll be changed. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Who do you say that he is? You can't say he's just a good man. I've heard that. Well, he was a good guy, kind of like Muhammad, kind of like Buddha, kind of like Confucius. Confucius, can't say that right. Socrates, you know, Plato, those guys. He was a good man. No, that won't cut it. That's not what he said about himself. He said, I'm God. They said, who are you? He said, I am. That's the name of God. I am. Either he's a nut or a liar, or he's who he's saying he is. And if he is who he says he is, then the question is will you believe him? Will you take him at his word? You might say, oh, I just can't believe this stuff. Oh, you've got a good believer. Every one of you sitting in the chair. You know, to sit in that chair, you had to look at it as you walked in. You kind of moved it a little bit, kind of tested it, and then you set yourself down on it. You believed that that chair would hold you. You believe the sun's going to come up tomorrow, and you're making plans already. You're thinking about tomorrow already. You believe the weather report. How silly is that? We all do. Well, it's going to rain next Saturday. We can't, we can't have the thing next Saturday or it's going to be raining. What? Yeah. Travis Meyer. He's the best. He is the best. But he's wrong about 80% of the time. And he's a good job, has a lot of money. Drives a big car, I bet. Big truck. Doesn't he run cattle? Oh, yeah. 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 You got to be silly to run cattle. But we believe that stuff. We plan it based on it. You believe. You got a good believer. We choose what to believe. And when you stand up there, God knows that it's what you choose to believe. That it's what you believe. That there's no excuse. There's no getting around it. You have a decision to make. You have a choice to make. He said to that man, get up and walk. And he believed. And he got up. And he walked. Another story I tell out there in the arena a lot. One of my favorite ones, Bartimaeus. 
blind beggar sitting by the side of the road. Jesus is leaving Jericho. Got a big crowd, big entourage. He says, who is it? Who's going by? They said, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And he starts screaming at the top of his lungs. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Shut up, they told him. He's a big man. He's busy. He's on his way. Jesus heard him. He said, bring him to me. They went and got him. He said, cheer up. He's calling me. He came and fell at Jesus' feet. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? That's the question. What do you want? What do you want Jesus to do for you? You want to go to heaven? You want your sins forgiven? You want to be made well? What do you want? He said, I want to see you. Jesus said, your faith is made you well. And he saw, and he followed and rejoiced, praising God. If, you are, if you've already believed, you've already been born again, then you need to be believing even more. You need to expect to do greater things than he did, because that's what he said in this book. You know, sometimes our preachers, our teachers, our books kind of dumb down that stuff. Well, he didn't really mean that. I think he did. It's right there in the book. Greater things. Greater things. You need to believe. You need to expect. You need to step out on his word, believing. And you need to keep on believing. And obeying what he says. If he says it, it's yours. You'll begin to see amazing things. And if you've not come to the place of believing, if you've kind of put it off, kind of shied away from it, don't let today go by. You know, we think we own tomorrow. We're thinking about it. We're expecting that sun to come up, but for some of us, it may not. We don't know the hour or the day. People die tragically, suddenly, all the time in our culture. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of God's favor. We don't own tomorrow. We don't own the next 15 minutes. The plane crashed into this building. Boom. If that's you, open your heart to him. Ask him to make himself real to you. He will. If you're a believer, you need to believe for bigger things. Miracles. He's giving you authority to speak his word. You need to believe for people to come to him, to know him. When you pray, you need to believe it. And you'll have it. That's what this book says. All my life people have said, well, it doesn't really mean that. Well, if it doesn't mean that, then why are we even here? It does mean that. I've been in science all my life, and most of science, about 90% of it, is a lie. People lie all the time. It doesn't matter if they're a PhD or the guy working at the gas station. People lie. Anything that men come up with is based mostly on lies. 
that this book is true. Completely true. And you need to bank on it. Because someday, you're going to stand before him. Did you read my book? Did you believe it? Well, not that part. That's going to be embarrassing. I believe it. What did you do? Well, did what you told me. That's all we got to do. And he's talking to you. And he was never talked to me. Oh, he's talking. You got to tune your radio in a little bit better. We don't have dials on there anymore, do we? You got to tune it in just a little bit more. And you'll hear him if you want to. He's speaking. I'm going to ask him to come and play a song here in a minute. I'm going to ask him to do something for me before they start. We should bring just bow your heads just for a minute. Close your eyes. <coughs> If you've never given your heart to him, if you've never told him that you want him to be your Lord and Savior, but if today's that day, every eye closed, just me looking around, just so I can pray for you, if you'll raise your hand and let me know that that's you, that you've decided to believe in. Take him in his word. Lift your hand. Thank you. I want us to pray this prayer together. All of us. Pray it right out loud. Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God and that you died for me. And I believe that my sins are forgiven. And my disease is healed. Because of what you did on the cross. And I thank you. That you caused me to be born again. And I thank you for new life. That's flowing in me. Eternal. I thank you for it in Jesus' name.